Elden Ring. Video games have a wide range of genres and systems that define those genres. Players have struggled with or not completely understood combat mechanics in games. Let's change that. Let's build the deck. I suggest watching the entire video as there may be details you are not aware of. Before we get into everything, half of this game is about the exploration and discovery. I would prefer not to spoil too many things for those who are watching but have yet to play Elden Ring. I recommend playing the game for a bit first, then come back to find out more. If you don't stand for such ceremony, you're welcome to continue. There are various mechanics I will mention but not explicitly say how to get or unlock. The details can be found in the video description. On to the combat example, which, by the way, will only count for a snippet of what combat is like in this game as a whole. All controls will be PlayStation oriented. Combat in Elden Ring will be a lot of rolling around on the ground, for most playstyles. It is very much a wait until it is your turn to attack style of action combat. The your turn phrase is also used a lot in fighting games. You have to find the gap in the flurry of attacks being launched at you. I use the shield in this combat example to provide an example of this. Getting out of the way is not the only way to create a gap while being attacked. Elden Ring is an action combat game, so I'm changing the order of the beginning topics. UI will be first and controls after, as the controls are vast and pieces of the UI affects some of what you can do. Let's start at the top left. Red bar is health, blue bar is FP, used for weapon skills and magic, and the green bar is stamina, which is spent performing actions like attacking with a weapon, blocking, dodging, and sprinting. Below these three bars is any buffs or debuffs you have. To the left of the bars is which great rune is equipped. These runes give you a variety of stat bonuses upon using a specific item. To the bottom left, starting with the big rectangles, each of these is tied to a d-pad button. The left d-pad button switches between weapons equipped to the left hand, and the right d-pad button does the same, but for the right hand. D-pad down cycles through all quick item slots. Holding the button will set it to the first quick slotted item. It also flashes red as a visual indicator. D-pad up cycles through all equipped spells and incantations. The small rectangles for D-pad up and down show you what item, spell, or incantation is next in the cycle. Press triangle to make the UI appear. Holding triangle brings up a new set of D-pad buttons. Assign items to these to the pouch here in the menu. Above the D-pad buttons is the name of a weapon skill. This is the skill that will be used with a weapon your character is currently holding in hand. This name will change as you switch weapons or two-hand weapons. 
At the top and the center is the compass. It displays the cardinal directions. Markers can be placed on the map and be seen on this compass. These markers will also disappear when you run near them. Notice there is no minimap like most games. The touchpad button brings up the map. I like this. Minimaps are useful, but I do find myself staring at it more than the game world. On the bottom right is the total number of runes you currently possess, the game's currency. Before we get into everything, know that the controls can be rebound. Ooh, controls. There are actually quite a few of them, and you will feel it when in the thick of combat. Left stick to move. Right stick to move the trusty camera. R3 to reset the camera behind you, but pressing R3 when in proximity to an enemy will lock onto them instead. R1 for basic attacks. R2 for strong attacks. The strong attacks can also be charged by holding R2 for some extra damage and poise destruction. R2 strong attacks generally have a follow-up attack. X to jump. Jumping can avoid some attacks. Basic attacks and strong attacks can also be done during a jump. Circle performs a backstep. Circle with the addition of a direction performs a dodge roll. These dodge rolls have invincibility frames, so attacks will pass right through you. If you happen to watch my Tales of Arise building the deck, there is a bit of time stop for its dodges, which gives some more oomph and proof of your success. But here, not seeing yourself get hit is your success. A few weapons have feints for their strong attacks. Hold R2, then press circle during the windup to perform the feint attack. This is available for thrusting swords, heavy thrusting swords, and curved swords. You can even change the direction the attack will happen in if you hold a direction when you press circle. An attack can also be performed with R1 after a back step or dodge. Hold circle and a direction to sprint. Sprint and jump for a long jump. When sprinting, you can perform a basic attack or strong attack. Square to use a currently equipped item. L3 to crouch. You can still dodge roll and sprint while crouching. There is also a crouch attack with R1. Jumping still works too, but your crouch will be cancelled if you jump. At this point, there are a few buttons I've not mentioned, namely triangle, L1, and L2. This is where you can become finger tied during an intense encounter. Controls will change slightly by what is currently equipped. The playstyle or equipment loadouts you go for will determine how much of the following controls you will need to know. Also, I'll be briefly mentioning skills. They will be talked about in detail later, but skills on weapons will affect some of your combat controls. The R buttons use your right hand armament, but what about the left? L1 uses the left hand armament and will perform a basic attack with it. If using a shield, L1 will block. Anytime you block an attack, whether it is physical or magical, you will lose stamina. How much stamina is lost is based on the type of attack and bonuses your character gets from equipment and stats. Stamina will refill more slowly while blocking. Some weapons allow you to attack while blocking. Press R1 while holding up your shield with L1. This method of attacking is available for thrusting swords, heavy thrusting swords, spears, and great spears. You can also block while sprinting. But L2 has nothing to do with the left hand armament. Pressing L2 will use the currently equipped skill of the left or right hand armament. But there is a priority system in place for this. If the shield has a skill equipped to it, L2 will use the shield's skill. If there is no skill equipped to the shield, L2 will use the right hand armament's skill. If your shield has a skill, but you would like to use the skill on your right hand armament, this is where you want to use triangle. Triangle plus R1 will make the character two hand their right hand armament. Now press L2 to use the weapon skill. Two handing a weapon will also increase its damage. Hold L1 while two handing to block with the weapon. Press triangle plus R1 to pull out the shield again. Triangle plus L1 also works. But if you press triangle plus L1 while in a normal state, you will two hand your left hand armament. Yes, the shield has now become a weapon. All buttons still apply just as before. The R buttons will attack. L1 will block with the shield. L2 will use the shield's skill. 
triangle plus L1 or R1 will set you back to normal. Also, have any of you found it odd that I've been saying right hand armament and left hand armament? This is how the game refers to its equipment. Already getting you used to the lingo. So far, this has been a lot and I'm still not done. You can still do more things in this game. Now, there are more weapons than a sword and shield, and we will get to all of the different melee weapons later. Bows behave slightly differently. Actually, it's more like they require one less button. With the bow in the right hand, press R1 or R2, and if in the left hand, press L1 or L2. The character will two-hand it for use. If you press triangle plus L1 or R1, it still works the same. Now let's go over what you can do with the bow. Holding R1 will ready the bow and notch an arrow. Release R1 to fire. While the bow is ready, you can still walk around and moving the camera will aim the bow. It is difficult to aim the bow this way, so I don't recommend it, but it is still possible. Hold L1 to enter first person aiming mode. You can of course still move around and aim with the right stick. Do remember arrows are projectiles and drop as they travel. Aim higher for those distant enemies. You can jump and still fire your bow. For a faster on the ground shot, jump and press R1 once you land. Ready a bow while crouching. When aiming, you can crouch or stand during it, but the crosshair doesn't budge an inch. You have to remember if you are crouching or not. Really though, why does it not move with the current height of the character? This would be extremely useful, not just for the player's awareness, but some potential arrow trajectories. But the crosshair does move when aiming and jumping and, and wait. When aim jumping, you can't move at a diagonal? I never noticed. I never noticed you could jump in aim mode and fire an arrow after playing for over, over 100 hours. R2 works differently for bows. You can equip two different types of arrows. One is used with R1 and the other is with R2. Notice when equipped with the bow, two more windows show up on the UI indicating the arrows equipped. Holding L2 activates a bow's skill. The character will enter a new bow firing stance. Press R1 while in this stance to fire. There are a few different bow skills and they will behave differently once fired. Walk around while within the stance. Hold L1 for first person aim while in the stance. If you're crouching and press L2 for the bow skill, you will leave the crouch state for the stance. Now, what do you do once you have notched an arrow but find you need to cancel it? There are multiple ways to do this. Press circle for a back step or a dodge. Jump. Press square to use an item. Crouch. Press D-pad left or right to switch weapons. Crossbows. Instead of notching an arrow, you load an arrow. Then fire it whenever you want. Press L1 or R1 dependent on the hand it is in to load an arrow. Press it again to fire. You can fire a crossbow while one-handed or two-handed, but you can only enter first person mode while two-handed. You can jump and fire the crossbow. Just like bows, you can equip two types of crossbow bolts. If the crossbow is in the left hand, L1 and L2 will determine which type of bolt is fired. If it is in the right hand, R1 and R2 will be used. If the crossbow is two-handed, only R1 and R2 will fire bolts. To dual wielding weapons. I was not kidding when I said I was not done. There's a difference if the weapons are of the same type or not. If both weapons are of a different type, press L1 to basic attack with the left hand armament, and R1 basic attack with the right. You can't perform a strong attack or use the skill with the left hand armament unless you two hand it. You can still jump attack with the right hand armament, but not with the left. The good news is the game still buffers your input and makes the attack happen with the left hand armament as soon as you land. But remember if you two hand the left hand armament, your attacks switch to R1 and R2. Equipping two weapons of the same type allows you to power stance. This changes some attack options and damage is increased when using these new attack options, as you will attack with both weapons at the same time. Press L1 for basic attacks. Now your attack string changes to a unique string that uses both the left and right hand armaments. Power stancing different weapon types results in a different attack string. R1 and R2 will still only use the right hand armament. L2 acts the same as before, only using the right hand armament's skill. Also, in this instance, I used two of the exact same sword, but as long as both weapons were of the straight sword variety, it will activate the power stance. Staves. If you like magic, you're going to want one of these. R1 will not basic attack, 
Instead, it casts your currently equipped magic. R2 is a staff whack. It cannot be charged. There's no power stance for equipping two staffs. Seals. This weapon allows you to cast incantations. Basically, a different kind of magic. It works the same as staves for the controls. But you get a punch instead of staff whack on R2. Be confident when casting your spells, as once you press that button, you're locked in, baby. When using a shield, you can parry enemy attacks, but first, make sure your shield has the parry skill. Press L2 to activate the parry. Time your parry to just as the enemy is about to swing at you. Do not activate parry just as you're about to get hit. That is too late. The parry has a startup and becomes active as the character swings the shield. If you activate your parry too late and the character still swung the shield, some of the damage you are supposed to take is blocked and you lose stamina. Once the enemy has recoiled, walk up to them and press R1 for a critical hit. These critical hits do a lot of damage. This kills one of these soldiers in one hit as compared to swinging my sword. A critical hit can also be performed from behind. Enemies can also be set up for critical hits by stance breaking them using strong attacks and jumping attacks. Once they crumble to their knees, do a critical hit from either the front or the back. Note, it usually takes multiple hits to crumble enemies this way. There is an invisible meter that fills when enemies are hit. Once this meter fills, they will be opened up for a critical hit. This invisible meter also depletes over time, so if there are long gaps between each hit, they will never crumble under the weight of your attacks. You'll encounter enemies that will not recoil from a parry and allow you to get a critical hit. It will take two or three parries. There are also enemies that cannot be critically hit. There are also some parry differences between types of shields, but we'll get into that when we go over weapon types. Note, there are invincibility frames during a critical hit. A bit into the game, you gain a trusty steed. You can fight atop your steed. Let's get into these controls. While mounted, you are defaulted to the right hand armament. R1 for a basic attack on the right. L1 for a basic attack on the left. And this is the same for the strong attacks with R2 and L2. The strong attacks can still be charged. These strong attacks are also a long active hitbox. Jump with X. There is a double jump. Circle to sprint. L3 to put away your spectral steed. Dismount while in motion. Items can still be used with square. Switch weapons. Use a bow. Bow skills cannot be used while mounted. Aim mode while mounted prevents you from moving in any direction except forward. With the left stick. You instead have to use the right stick to aim and move left or right. Notching the bow regularly lets you move freely. Canceling a notched arrow is the same as mentioned before. Crossbows work the same as bows while mounted. There are also some invincibility frames when mounting and dismounting the horse. Magic and incantations can be cast while mounted as well. But be careful when you choose to cast, as you can't cancel it. Note, these spirals of wind help with traversal. Jump high, or have a safe trip down. Now, a tip that will save your Elden Ring walking through the lands between life of death. Mash buttons to get out of some grabs faster. Wait a second. We're not done yet. I didn't mention ladders. Press R1 to attack above you. R2 to attack below. Use your flask. Hold circle to slide down. Press circle to drop. Fall damage. Fall too far and sustain damage, and if in combat, drain stamina. The damage you take or death from a fall is calculated by the distance you fell from and the surface you landed on. There are ways to reduce the amount of damage taken from a fall, but if a fall would mean instant death, there is no way to prevent it. Fall 15.9 meters or less, take no damage. 16 meters, take 30% of max HP as damage. 19.9 meters, 50% of max HP as damage. 20 meters or more, instant death. This information is from Frex for Life's Elden Ring wiki, and a breakdown of what else can affect fall damage is detailed on their wiki. 
Note, if you attack near a ledge, the game will stop you from falling unless it is very clearly a non-fatal drop. Press the start button to open the main menu. There is equipment, item crafting, inventory, status, messages, multiplayer, system, pouch, and gestures. I will not be going over the messages and multiplayer options in this video. System will be mentioned if necessary. There is a button key that changes depending on what section of the menu is highlighted. Health bars and rune count are also visible here. Before I get into all of these menus, let's take a look at the pouch and gestures. Press triangle on any of these to assign an item to the pouch. Notice there are six slots and not four as was shown earlier. The top four are hotkeys for the D-pad while holding triangle, while the bottom two can only be used from this menu. Use the bottom two pouch slots for items you do not need in a hurry or during combat. It is common for From Software games to also not pause while their menus are open. All you can do is move and move the camera. Gestures are emotes and they are assigned to controller motions, or you can turn them off. But if they are turned off, you must open the menu to use them. Each of the motions must be performed while holding triangle and with a quick wide motion for them to work. Gesture 1 is tilting or rotating the controller to the right. 2 is moving the controller to the left. 3 is tilting the controller back. 4 is moving the controller away from you. 5 is tilting the controller forward. And 6 is moving the controller to the right. Let me know if I'm mistaken on any of these. Now, I did manage to get all of these to work, but my god does it not want to work sometimes. If you want to use these motion controls, use 2 or 6. Moving the controller left or right is very simple and works. 3 and 5 worked too, but it felt the system could not differentiate between the two very well. I tested each of these gestures by only having one equipped at a time. I got 3 and 5 to work tilting either forward or back with varying degrees of force. Please ignore one. That was the hardest one for me to get to work. When selecting a gesture, there is a symbol in the top left indicating it is already equipped. Back to the left. Let's start from the top. Equipment! The left is all equipment currently equipped, in the center is the stats of the currently highlighted item, and the right is your character's stats. With the button key at the bottom. In the top left, this is the name of the currently highlighted slot. Here you can equip three weapons or shields. Next to this is two slots for arrows, the first arrow slot being R1 and the second R2. The second row is for weapons and shields. The last two slots are for bolts. These slots work the same as bows, except bolts are for crossbows. The third row is for armor. There is a headpiece, body, gloves, and feet. The fourth row is for talismans, which provide various passive effects. The last two rows are for items. A lot of things can be equipped here. Flasks, throwing items like knives or pots, status alleviating items, grease, interesting word choice, to imbue your weapon with different types of damage, and more. The same type of items can be equipped here, or in the pouch. Time to get into some numbers. A lot of numbers. But don't worry, we're going into all of the different weapon types after this. Before I get into this, there is a helpful help option if you press the touchpad button. View controls shows the controls for this menu. Menu explanation displays the summarization of the menu that appears when you open the equipment menu for the first time. And explanation is the key one I wanted to mention. It gives you a description of each highlighted piece of information. Jeez, that was a lot of shuns. In the center, you have the item's name, the type of weapon, the type of damage it does, the skill it has innately or equipped, the FP cost of the skill, and the item's weight. The skill's icon goes here, or it will look like this if you can equip a skill to it, and a picture of the weapon. Attack power. These are the numbers that affect how much and what elemental type of damage the weapon does. There is physical, magic, fire, lightning, and holy. Critical is how strong your critical hits are from behind, after a parry, or when you stance break an enemy into a critical hit. The plus sign and number to its right is the amount of bonus damage the weapon is receiving from its attribute scaling. Guard damage negation. This is how much damage is mitigated for each damage type. It is the same options as under attack power, but there is no critical. The last stat is guard boost. The higher this number, the less amount of stamina that is consumed when you guard an attack. Attribute Scaling These are the stats a weapon scales with, meaning this is how much the physical damage of this weapon will increase with that stat. The letters indicate how strong of an increase the weapon will get. 
From least to greatest, the scaling is E, D, C, B, A, S. Here's an example of how the stats change with different grades of scaling. Attributes required. These are the stats required of your character to use the weapon's full strength. No matter what your stats are, you can equip any weapon, but there are some drawbacks if you do not have the required stats. When looking through weapons, some will have a red X in the right corner. These are weapons your character does not meet attribute requirements for. When you try to equip one of these weapons, one of two messages will show up. Unable to use this item effectively with present attributes means you can't use the weapon's skill and get attack power reductions. Instead of a plus next to a stat and attack power, there is a minus sign showing the base number is decreased by the number to the right. Under attributes required, the numbers in red are the stats your character does not meet. It is also not possible to use the weapon's skill when this message appears. Unable to use this item effectively with present attributes, unless wielded with both hands, is the other message that can be displayed when equipping a weapon with a red X. This means the weapon can only be used at full strength if you two-hand the weapon. Two-handing a weapon increases your character's strength stat. If that number equals or exceeds the weapon's strength requirement, the weapon can be used at full strength. Also, while one-handing, the skill does not activate, but it does activate while two-handing. Note, if a stat that is not strength is in red, you will have to increase that stat. Two-handing will not affect it. Passive effects are what extra statuses a weapon applies when hitting enemies. Enemies also have the ability to apply these statuses to you. When you are hit with a status or walk in a very clearly green pool of sludge, you accumulate the poison status, indicated by this also green bar. Each status has its own color and icon. These are the statuses you will be dealing with, and you only deal with the negative effects after the accumulation bar fills. Poison, take damage over time. Scarlet Rot, greater damage over time. Blood Loss, does instant damage based on max HP. 15% of a normal enemy's max HP, and 7% of a boss's max HP, plus 100 or 200 damage depending on the weapon used. Frostbite, does damage to HP. 10% of a normal enemy's max HP, and 5% of a boss's max HP, plus 30 damage. Lowers all damage negation by 20%. Lowers stamina regeneration. These debuffs last for 30 seconds, and Frostbite cannot be built up again until this debuff ends. Sleep. You or the enemy fall asleep, and some enemies will only briefly stumble about instead of falling asleep completely. Sleep also drains FP. Madness. Briefly stuns, and the target takes damage based on their max HP. 15% of max HP, plus 100, and 10% max FP, plus 30. Death Blight causes the target to die immediately. Note, rolling around in poison causes you to accumulate buildup even when standing outside of the poison. Pressing square while selecting a weapon changes the middle section of the screen to display the item's lore and skill. Do pay attention to these descriptions. Some provide information to the world of Elden Ring, and some hidden abilities may just be hidden in their text. Character status. Level. Runes held. Vigor. Increases total HP. Affects fire resistance and immunity. Mind. Increases total FP. Affects focus. Endurance. Increases total stamina affects robustness, and increases the equip load. Remember the stats from Strength to Arcane are a part of attribute scaling, so the higher these are, the higher the damage you will have with various weapons. Strength affects physical defense. Dexterity reduces casting time of spells, lowers fall damage, and makes it harder to be knocked off your horse. Intelligence required for glintstone sorceries. Magic boosts power of intelligence scaling sorceries, improves magic resistance. Faith required for incantations boost power of faith scaling incantations. Arcane, increases discovery. This increases item drop rates. Affects holy defense, vitality, and certain sorceries and incantations. Arcane also increases the number for passive effects, but only if the weapon scales with this stat. Total HP, FP, and stamina. Equipment load is how much weight of equipment you can equip. Character movement is slower the more weight you have. There are four types of movement tied to weight. Which one you get is based on the percentage of your total weight you have filled. There is light, medium, heavy, and overloaded. The light load has a further roll distance and quicker backstep. 
medium load is the normal roll distance and backstep. You'll mostly be trying to stay within this category. Heavy load has a roll and backstep that takes longer to perform. There's also a minus 20% to your stamina regeneration. Overloaded is the oh lord he coming, but very slowly. You can't roll or backstep. Poise, the degree to which you can resist collapsing under enemy attacks. Meaning, how quickly your character staggers and is not able to perform an action when hit with an attack. If this stat is high enough, it is possible to withstand multiple hits while attacking and not get interrupted. Discovery, increases item drop rates. Memory slots, the number of slots available for memorizing or equipping sorceries and incantations. Last is the currently equipped Great Room. We're not done, there is more. Press triangle to switch to the rest of your character stats. Under attack power is the attack power of each currently equipped right and left hand armaments. R armament, 1, 2, 3, and L armament, 1, 2, 3. Defense slash damage negation. For each damage type, there are two numbers. The left number is how much defense you have to this type based on your character stats. And the second is based on gear and passive effects. There is physical versus strike versus slash versus pierce, magic, fire, lightning, and holy. Resistance. These stats affect how quickly status ailments apply to your character. Immunity. Resistance to poison and rot. Robustness. Resistance to blood loss and frostbite. Focus. Resistance to sleep and madness. Vitality. Resistance to death. The numbers here work differently. The left number is affected by talismans. Gear affects both the left and right numbers. I did not understand how much of an effect the resistance stats had during my playthrough. I just took the game's word for it. What I found was the higher the values, the larger the ailment bar is, so that makes it take longer to fill. As an example, let's say poison takes 100 points of poison application to fill. Now you equip an immunity resistance item. Now it takes 120 points of poison application to fill. Here's an example for poison. Notice how the accumulation bar is longer due to the higher immunity stat on the right example. Now we will be doing a little back and forth between the main menu and a new menu, the grace menu. Grace points are rest spots that work as fast travel points. This is where you level up your character and change other parameters. Enemies also respawn after you sit at a grace point. This does not include bosses and certain enemies. A grace is not usable if an enemy is too close. Lure them away or harvest those sweet runes. Upon death, you will respawn at the last site of grace you sat at. Stakes of Marika. These act as fast travel points as well, but are only usable when you inevitably die within its vicinity. This Stake of Marika symbol will be below the stamina bar in the buffs slash debuff section to let you know when choosing a Stake of Marika is a respawn option instead of a site of grace. The level up menu is where you level your character. Spend runes to gain levels. Choose a stat to increase, and notice various numbers turn blue. This indicates which parameters are being affected. Raising a stat by 1 also increases the character level by 1. As the character level increases, the rune cost per level increases. You can find the rune cost of each level in the video description. Note: It is possible to reset your character's stats and redistribute the stat points. Info in the video description. If you follow the directed path at the beginning of the game, you will quickly come across item crafting. There is a colorful variety of items to craft and use, but you first must acquire the recipe via a recipe book and have the required materials. Use L1 and R1 to filter between the different types. A few early and notable ones. Fire pot, throw at enemies to inflict fire damage. Rainbow stones, which have quite a few creative uses. Bone arrows, make your own arrows for your bow. Staunching boluses, alleviates blood loss. There are plenty more varied craftable items, but I'd like to not spoil the fun. But the information can be found in the video description if you'd like to take a look. The inventory. There are a lot of tabs that separate the different types of items, but the one thing I want you to truly make note of for this menu is the symbol for each tab. As you pick up items in the world, one of these symbols appears with the name of the item. This helps you understand what tab the item is added to. I can't tell you how many times I picked up an item and pressed triangle out of instinct, or I picked up an item in combat to immediately close the window and question what I just got. Then, 
fumble through the tabs looking for it. It happened to everyone. Streamers, video creators, there were no exceptions. And then you realize you can sort your items. Press L3. And when the game first came out, this L3 sort was not on the UI, but was still usable. I did not notice this. Over 100 hours! So just how many different weapons are in Elden Ring? There are daggers, straight swords, great swords, colossal swords, thrusting swords, heavy thrusting swords, curved swords, curved great swords, katanas, twin blades, axes, great axes, hammers, great hammers, flails, colossal weapons, spears, great spears, halberds, reapers, whips, fists, claws, light bows, bows, great bows, crossbows, ballistae, glintstone staffs, sacred seals, and torches. I wanted this section of the video to showcase each weapon type, but I wanted to show every type of attack. This would have added an extra 30 minutes or more alone, so I opted to make a different video for this instead. Check the card at the top right of the screen and it will be in the video description. Note, the attacks for weapons of the same type can vary. We're still going to talk about shields though. There are three types of shields, small, medium, and great. The differences in their attack power, physical damage negation, and guard boost are the most notable, as these numbers are higher the bigger the shield. If you aren't going to hit enemies with your shield, you can ignore the attack power. Small shields are the slowest in terms of their stats, but a small shield that has a parry is generally the faster and easiest option. The parry animation happens quicker with these shields. Small shields also weigh the least. Medium shields stats are generally higher than small shields, and they weigh more. Medium shields can also have the parry skill. Great shields are the heaviest shields, and you cannot parry with these. The physical damage negation and guard boost are very high. You easily will take the least amount of damage and stamina loss per block with them. Stats on shields can vary quite a bit. Check them to determine what is best for your needs. There is also frame data for different shield types and parries. Take a look in the description below the video. Now that we have gone over all the different types of weapons, let's go over how they can be upgraded. Starting with Ashes of War. If a weapon has this symbol next to its image, it can be equipped with an Ash of War. Most weapons come with a skill by default, and equipping an Ash of War will override it. There are many different Ash of War skills to be found all throughout the lands between, and some can only be equipped to a specific class of weapon or weapons. View the description of the Ash of War by pressing R3 for the detailed view, and then press square to switch display. Once a skill is selected, a new window appears, letting you select an affinity for the weapon. Recall when I went over attribute scaling. The higher the scaling, the more of an impact this stat from your character will have on the strength of the weapon. These affinities are what allow you to alter a weapon's attribute scaling, and you gain access to more affinities as you acquire wet blades. Be on the lookout for them, because they can do more than just change a weapon's scaling. Here are just a few of the Ashes of War you can find during your journey. For links with a full list of all Ashes of War and Wet Blades, check the video description. Note, did you notice when selecting an affinity, it adds to the name of the weapon? I freaking love these extra bits of fantasiness. There are also weapons that can't have their skills overwritten. These weapons generally have a unique skill. There is no cost to adding or removing Ashes of War, but if you try to equip the same Ash of War to multiple weapons, there will be a message asking if you want to remove it from the previous weapon to the new weapon. It is possible to get duplicate Ashes of War. Upgrading weapons through the blacksmith. You can use smithing stones to upgrade your weapons, indicated by this plus sign with a number next to it. In the blacksmith window, use L1 or R1 to filter between the different weapon types. Next is the current amount of held runes. Below is where you select which weapon you would like to upgrade. When a weapon is highlighted, you can see the required grade of smithing stone and how many of them are needed for the upgrade. The number in parentheses is how many of this stone you have. Underneath the weapon is the rune cost for the upgrade. On the right is the weapon's stats and information. 
Blue attributes are what will be increased upon upgrading. You can also view all weapon details here as well. There are also somber smithing stones, which are used to upgrade unique weapons you may acquire. The number and type of smithing stone you need for each upgrade changes for each upgrade level. There are also differences between the regular smithing stone and somber smithing stone upgrade paths. The smithing stones also look different depending on what grade it is. Note, not all smithing stones were included in the following images. Here's the exact number of smithing stones for upgrading regular weapons. Here's the exact number of somber smithing stones for upgrading unique weapons. This information is also available in the video description. Feeling alone and need some help? Does a certain spectral witch have a gift for you? Summon your very own spirit to fight by your side. They come in various shapes, sizes, and strength. To summon a spirit, you first have to acquire the summoning bell, then afford the FP cost to summon it. The spirit tuning window works the same as the blacksmith's. L1 or R1 to filter types and the cost and item requirement for the upgrade. Spirits use Glove Warts, Grave Glove Wart for regular spirits, and Ghost Glove Wart for unique spirits. Equip a summon to a quick item slot or the pouch. The final step is making sure this symbol is available on screen. If it is not, a summon is not possible. If your spirit is fading in and out like a half working strobe light at the city raid because they feel like taking it slow and smooth. This means you're about to leave the summonable area. Once the blinking starts and you continue to move in that direction, your summon will despawn. By the way, your summon's health is displayed here on the left. Here are a few summons you may come across in your journey. Like weapons, spirits can also be upgraded. Here's the required Glove Warts for regular spirits. Ghost Glove Wart will upgrade unique spirits. How to unlock access to spirits and upgrading is outlined in the video description. Changing the time of day has some effects on enemy placement and which enemies might appear. Flasks are a staple of Souls games. Your character drinks from it and is healed. At a Sight of Grace, there is a Flasks option. Add charges to the flask for more total heals. Increase the amount that is restored by a flask, and allocate flask charges. The red flask is for HP, and blue is for FP. Choose how many of your flasks are allocated to each type. Sit at a Sight of Grace to refill all flasks. Remember the first quick item slot in the equipment window can be quickly swapped to by holding down on the D-pad for your HP flask, or assign it to a D-pad slot in the pouch. In your travels, there will be moments when you run out of flasks, but you don't want to fast travel to a grace and force enemies to respawn. There are two methods to refill your flask without sitting at a grace point. When you defeat a group of enemies, you can see this red trail. This means some of your flasks have been refilled. There are also scarabs. These red ones, when defeated, will refill red flasks, and blue ones refill blue flasks. Note, press the button for your flask again before it is put away to take multiple chugs. If you know you need two drinks, just press the button again instead of going through the full animation twice. Memorize spell is where you equip which sorceries or incantations you would like to use in combat. Here's your current spells, number of memory slots, how many slots are empty, and your character's current FP. Once you select a spell slot, L1 and R1 will filter between everything, or offensive or defensive sorceries or incantations. The description of the currently highlighted option is on the right. Note some options require more than one slot to equip, and you can unlock more memory slots, and you guessed it, by finding a specific item out in the world. Mix Wondrous Physic. This is a different type of flask. At the top are your two currently chosen tier effects, and below are all effects you can choose from. To the right is the description of the tier. Equip two different effects to occur when you drink the physic. These effects are only temporary, and how long they last can be dependent on what tier is used. See which tier effects you can find, or just check in the video description. Sort chest is as it sounds. Place items in the chest to remove them from your inventory. Press triangle to switch to the chest section to add them back to your inventory. There is a tab for each item type. 
This is mainly useful for equipment and for some usable items. For equipment, you may like equipping or unequipping things at various times. Store your extra equipment so you don't have to scroll through endless gear to reach what you want. Efficiency! Or store consumable items like arrows. You can only hold 99 of any of these items, but you can store up to 600. Some items have an even lower limit. See this symbol on the bottom left? This indicates that you can auto-refill these items when you sit at a site of grace. So you have 99 arrows and you use 40 of them. If you sit at a site of grace with arrows in the chest, they will automatically be replenished with the arrows kept in the chest. Note, be sure auto-refill is turned on or off with R3. Alter Garments. Pay a few runes to change the appearance of some equipment. What? Looking good is important to combat? Choose the armor piece you would like to change in Before Alterations. Once selected, pick an option in After Alterations. Note, some stat changes occur if you choose to alter an item's appearance. Unfortunately, for most equipment, this is just removing the cape. But there are a few items that change more dramatically. Merchants. There are quite a few to stumble upon with various items for sale. Can you find them all? There are other various NPCs that have their own goods for sale. A notable one is the Twin Maiden Husks. Speak to them if you happen to find any bell-bearing items. For full details on these merchants, check the video description. The map. Don't let it deceive you. There is more to be seen here and that can't be seen here. And pay attention to the key at the bottom. Press square for a list of markers. Need to remember where a specific enemy or notable location is? Mark it. The game will note some things on your map, like ruins, certain NPCs you have spoken to, and sites of grace visited. There are more notable symbols built into the map that are not icons that are named when hovered over. Explore and see what you can find. Press triangle for a list of sites of grace. This. The things you can do from here. The key changes. Square will instantly send you to the round table hold. Triangle toggles the list of graces. What does this mean, you ask? You can press R3 to mark a site of grace as a favorite and filter them. I did not notice this over 100 hours. As a reminder, there is a spreadsheet that lists how to unlock each mechanic and required items to upgrade weapons and spirits. Along with links for runes for each level, all weapons, all merchants, all talismans, and all craftable items. Oh, and three different interactive maps, and a completionist checklist. Find all of these in the video description. Now, do you understand Elden Ring's combat and mechanics? If so, click the like button to tell me so or leave a comment telling me to do a better job. Click subscribe if you would like to see guides like this for more games. Also, come watch me play games on Twitch. Until next time.